and welcome back to the painting video and for today I decided to make a tutorial on how to paint a sunset I was actually just going to make a quick time lapse of this video since I was busy with work but then I remembered a couple of you guys mentioned that you wanted to see more real-time paintings so you can follow along with me so I decided to show everything I did while I painted even all the poses in between when I'm thinking so go ahead get your painting supplies out or just put me in the background while you do some some other work if you want to since it's going to be a long one but fun one with a lo-fi mix as well <laughs> As you can see, I took out three colors, red, orange, and white, even though I'll be using other colors in my gouache set, but I was just trying to set a main color scheme in my head and it looked aesthetic in the viewfinder, so I just left it there. But anyway, to start with, I first wet my brush and dipped it into red since I wanted the top part to be darker. And as you go down, it will get lighter as the sun is setting down. So that part closer to the sun will be lighter in color. The key in painting a sunset is to know how to blend the colors. Well, using gouache makes it a bit easy in my opinion since it can be reactivated on paper with water if you need to blend even more. <laughs> Adding my first layer of red, I decided to add orange in the bottom and slowly blend it upwards to kind of remove the line in between the red and the orange and making sure to wet my brush in between so that way it's not a thick paint and it can move smoothly on the paper. And then going down even more, I decided to add some yellow and again slowly blend it out and if it doesn't blend as much, just try to wet your brush a little bit but not too much because you don't want to dig into the paper and slowly blend it out. thing you can also paint with a square brush for this one because it probably will make it easier for the background but I was doing it on a small paper and I didn't mind using a smaller brush to blend it out I was just having fun blending the colors and that's what I also want you guys to remember is just remember that you're here to have fun that you're enjoying the process and don't forget to take a break if you feel like it's getting frustrating and then come back after you give your eyes a break And you've probably noticed that I've been adding yellow and blending it upwards and also kind of bringing it down just to make it seem more seamless with the graduation of the colors and I still wanted the bottom part to be more yellow so I would clean my brush, go dip it in the yellow and add in the bottom again. After that I decided to add some white after cleaning my brush and then slowly blend it up upwards to create that seamless graduation again. And if I felt like there was harsh lines in between the colors, I would just dip my paintbrush in water again and then try to blend it even more.
was satisfied with the background, I wanted to add some clouds and I was kind of looking at a reference picture but also not following it because I wanted to go off of something from my imagination. So I kind of started out by painting white clouds but then I kind of ended up blending in the background because I wanted to make the clouds look darker just to create a more impactful effect, <laughs> if that makes sense. And to create the more impactful effect I was talking about earlier, basically I meant creating more depth. I decided to use some blue and purple colors just to create some clouds and yeah, just give it some depth. So just follow along what I'm doing and I'll try to talk through it as I go. And so you guys understand where and why I'm placing the clouds the way it is. It's just in my head, I'm imagining the sun to be in the middle where the yellow and white part is. So that means the darkest cloud would be in the corners and then get lighter, not too much, but lighter as it gets closer in the middle. So I decided to start out with dark blue and purple. And then the clouds is basically just like dabbing the paint, the pointed paintbrush in the corners, just trying to imagine where the clouds would be. And this is just the first layer. So there'll be like other layers so you don't have to be too perfect just think about the shapes you want it to have and then have fun with it And sometimes when I explain, I kind of get lost with using words. So just follow along with the visuals as well. And for the clouds, as you can see, I started the corners to be thicker clouds. And as I get in the middle, which is closer to the sun in my head, the clouds get thinner. So it's like starting out big blobs and get thinner and thinner in the middle. And then that's where I'm also going to make it lighter. And then I'll go back and darken the clouds as I feel like it needs to be. And then I'll add some more red just to create some fiery colors. And yeah, just follow along what I'm going to do with that. And here, I just want to tell you that when I was using my paintbrush to add the clouds, I was kind of like squinting just to figure out where I wanted the colors to be at or stepping away for a little bit. Just looking at it from far if I was happy with the shape. So make sure you guys do that as well. And yeah, just use your pointer brush and add those shapes. like I was satisfied with the darker colors I went in and added some red and then also mixed some orange and whiter colors as I got close to the middle and that was not really a direct way of doing it I just felt like adding it as I got closer or kind of on the edge top of each cloud and just drop it where I felt like the colors were needed and yeah I was basically just jamming to music and having fun with my colors <laughs>
as I got closer to the middle, I kind of used a little bit of orange, but then I kind of mixed a little bit with red so it's like a darker orange just to add some shaded clouds with it. And then I also added some white as I get below and below because it was getting closer to the sun. Although I didn't paint the sun, but that's what I'm imagining it to be like. And yeah, I just kind of followed this pattern and placed the clouds until I felt like there was enough clouds. <laughs> Like I was pretty much done with the background but as you know you can probably relate to it or not but I cannot stop adding details sometimes and I feel like I heard it somewhere that they say a painting is never really complete until you decided you're done painting so I don't know I feel like I'm gonna keep going and adding some colors and eventually moved on to the next part For the next part of the painting, I wanted to paint a mountain with snow on top of it so that I could capture the light from the sunset, the orange, yellow, any reflection on it and I wanted to create the textures so that's why I pulled out my palette knife because that could help me have those textures that I wanted and the first layer which is the base layer, I mix a little bit of blue, red, and black just so that I could have the back like that. And then when I would add white and arrange all those shapes on top, it would pop out on the mountain. And here I was just trying to get the outline of the mountain, which you could technically use a paintbrush to do it, but 
I just want to use my palette at this point and again I was having fun doing it I think it's just me listening to some lo-fi and just like being in the zone with it so yeah if you feel like you want to use your palette knife go ahead if you feel like you want to use a paintbrush go ahead I just want you guys to remember just to have fun as it's something that I wish I could have told myself a long time ago and yeah I'm here to remind you guys just in case you have forgotten <laughs> well I'm pretty sure you haven't forgotten but I know that sometimes you can get frustrated with painting and you just want to get it right and you just kind of let go of how you actually felt when you first started painting or why you started it because when you're all kids we we're just here having fun with colors and I still want all of us to hold on to those feelings because that's what made us keep going and now we're painting even after we grew up it was time to hide the white part so basically I cleaned my palette took out all the black colors off of it and then I dipped it the edges in white and kind of angle it in diagonal way as I try to dab the color on the surface and I think it would help more if you wait for the base layer to dry first I kind of didn't wait for it so that's why you can see it looking gray right now but I will keep adding layers on top just to make it look white and then go from there here is to use your palette knife at an angle just so that you don't scrape all the black paint away but also not cover it with white completely and kind of just put it at the angle on the tip of the mountain and then move it slowly down it's just working step by step first layer and then you'll add a second layer and keep adding layers after that we just want to slowly build up even if it's looking great it's okay I'll just keep working with it. After I'm done with the first layer, I'll wait for it to dry and go back with another layer if I feel like it.
satisfied with the textures and colors I created for the mountain, I decided to switch to my smaller paintbrush just to add more white highlights on top. And because I had slowly dabbed my palette knife with a thicker paint, I had some of the rough texture on it and I was just kind of following along and just add the white on the top and edges of the mountain. And I know it can kind of get confusing at times because it did for me too. So that's why I just want to remind you guys to take a break and step away from it. Let it dry before you continue if you feel like you're getting frustrated. And just remember to take some of the white, add it on top and then blend it as you get down. But don't blend it completely just so that you still have some of the background showing through. That way you're showing that there's some snow but then the rocks at the back also shows up as well. And here we also have to remember that we are painting it during a sunset and when you look at a sunset usually you see a lot of the reflection of the sunlight basically orange colors or red or yellow kind of reflects on different surfaces so since this is snow we'll definitely have some orange colors and yellow on it and yeah that's why i wanted to move on next but my camera kind of died in the middle and you won't see the first part when i added the colors but don't worry you didn't miss much because i'm still gonna show you guys how i basically dab on the colors slowly on the paper make sure not to put it completely and cover the whole surface but just add some random points and keep making sure that some of the background shows up as well. And again, it might start getting messy in your head. You might get frustrated because it kind of looks like it's blending, but trust me and trust the process. 
it will take some time when you take some break and you come back you can definitely add some more white to bring back the snow if you feel like it went away or come back and add some of the orange if you feel like you need more reflection it's just having fun with the process again and yeah follow along with me And this is what I was talking about earlier. After I added the orange, I felt like I covered most of the snow again. So I just went back and added the white, following the same step I was doing, just placing the whites on the edges and making sure that this time <laughs> some of the background would show up. And yeah, just keep going from there. back at the step when we were doing the sky where i felt like the painting was basically done but i just felt like i could add more and more details so yeah basically i'm just gonna keep dabbing paints randomly until i finally feel satisfied and eventually force myself to stop working on the mountain because there was still one more step 
one more layer to add which was in front of the mountain and I felt like because I didn't add the foreground that's why I felt like the mountain was incomplete because the painting was actually incomplete but the mountain was not the front part of it it was kind of in the background so I should not spend too much time putting details which I did eventually but that was the only way to convince myself to stop doing it <laughs> It was finally time to paint the foreground and the nice thing with sunset is you put a lot of colors on the sky and then the foreground could just be black shapes so I just painted like a forest in front of the mountain and yeah that was the easiest part basically and I know when you guys will reach this part as well you will think this is a lot of fun after going through what we went <laughs> with the sky and the mountains so enjoy this part as well <laughs> So after adding the basic shape of how I wanted the forest to look like, I basically just used my smaller pointed brush just to slightly dab and make it look like pointy trees in front of the mountain. And yeah, I don't know how else I could explain it. Just look at what I'm doing and hopefully that makes sense. <laughs>
all right i hope that you guys enjoy watching me paint and my little awkward poses in between what i was thinking and let me know what you thought about it down below and if you painted it tag me on instagram i would love to see it and i will see you in the next one Allez, bye. Thank you.